Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lisa and typically I make vlogs, I also make lifestyle and beauty videos. So today's video is actually quite out of the norm. I don't typically make videos about finance. In fact, I'm usually quite uncomfortable talking about finance and the reason why it took me so long to make this video is because I really wanted to make a video that is very inclusive to everybody and would be relatable to everybody and how this video even came into inception was because about a few years ago I posted a video about how I transformed my life and so many of you have actually DM'd me or commented on the video going like can you give more tips about the finance portion or can you talk a little bit more in depth about how you changed your life life financially and like I said because the long story short answer of how I changed my life financially had to do with the fact that I launched a side hustle and eventually that grew into a full-time business but that being said I understand that not everybody wants to have a side hustle and not everybody wants to start a business so like I said because until I was able to find a more relatable I guess list of tips to share with you guys I wasn't comfortable in sharing something that wasn't going to be an interest to everybody but I'm very excited because in today's video I am confident in saying that I have come up with a template that I'm very very excited to share with you because genuinely all of these tips are tips that I have used in my own life for myself so that is also the disclaimer of today's video is that I am not a professional or an expert in a lot of these fields so a lot of the tips that I'm going to give you is going to be just some broad overview tips and and for you guys to go ahead and look into it a little bit further and it will be a very great ideal starting point for you but for those of you who are even like okay but why should we listen to you in the first place if you guys are new to my channel I do want to talk about my background a little bit in case you guys are new so I did go to university I did go to business school also went and studied a wealth management class if that's relevant to anybody but it is relevant in today's video and in today's tips by the way but also I did work a corporate job for many years and eventually was able to get myself out of that situation and I was able to quit my corporate job after starting my own side hustle etc you can also watch a video here by the way about when I decided to quit etc so throughout this entire journey I really relied on a lot of the tips I'm going to be sharing with you today so these are all my personal tips and a lot of the things I did was very important to me because once again part of my journey about going full-time was I had one rule and one rule only about quitting my job which was to not negatively impact my family in any way that was a huge priority for me I needed to be completely self-sustaining so when I had my corporate job I also had just purchased my first home and that was when I had a mortgage and I wanted to quit my job comfortably without impacting anybody and having to get my parents to help me pay the mortgage etc like I said I really only have my experience but I hope that is going to be helpful for you today but these are a lot of the tips that I use to increase my finances each month so whether or not you are trying to increase your savings increase your disposable income whatever it may be I hope these tips are useful so with that being said let's get straight into the video the first disclaimer that I want to talk about in terms of my personal philosophy and it's going to be different for everybody but once again the list of tips in this video are from myself so I'm gonna talk about my philosophy a little bit so in any type of saving situation disposable income etc the math formula is very simple everyone has revenue minus expenses so revenue obviously just whatever money that comes in whether it's from your job allowance etc just like side money that you get in minus expenses which is obviously your day-to-day -day living expenses your shopping going out to eat etc and then whatever is left over is your money that you have left over my philosophy personally is I have always grown up and I don't know if this is relatable to anybody but I am extremely terrible at controlling my expenses I am so bad at saving money that it kind of went against what my family grew up teaching me because I do come from a typical Asian household so if you are also from a typical Asian household I am sure you guys are familiar with the concept of saving which is actually not going to be the prime focus point of today's video although I do have to say that a lot of Asian parents will appreciate this video because I do have a lot of really good tips 
That being said, I obviously grew up in a household where a lot of the things my parents focused on was how to reduce your expenses. So how do you save money and spend less so you can have more money left over? But then one day as I was, I don't know, I think I was in university, I sort of had an epiphany and I'm just like, another way to have more money is just to increase the amount of money that comes in in the first place because the math works very simply right you could decrease your expenses and have the same amount of money left over or you can increase the expenses and have the same amount of money left over and keep your expenses the same so me understanding a little bit more about myself and who i am i'm just kind of like okay you know what i'm going to be the type of person that increases my revenue because i struggle so much with decreasing expenses i still want to go out to eat i still want to shop etc so this was kind of my way to go going into the actual bulk of this video I have two major categories of tips I'm going to be starting off with a category that I think is going to be relatable to everybody these are the tips that anyone can implement and I'm gonna call this category the work smart not hard category because these are all tips that anyone can do like I said the second category I'm going to be calling it the work hard tips because this is the category where where it is gonna be consisting of my major tip, which was starting my own side hustle. So if you guys are interested in putting even more effort, then I think the second half of this major category of tips is going to apply to you. But that being said, let's get to the first major category, which is work smart, not hard. So diving into this category, the first thing that I want to say about this category is genuinely something that I learned about rich people mentality is that rich people, people with a lot of money know how to to play every single system. So for example, I'm gonna go straight into tip number one. So tip number one is be smart with where you put your money. And I think this is really applicable because there are so many banks out there, but there are different accounts for you to put your money in and different accounts that generate different interest rates. So if you guys didn't know, if you put your money into a bank account, you know, over time, if that same amount of money is there, the bank will give you some sort of money for keeping your money in their bank. So there's obviously just a regular checking account, savings account, but there's also a high interest savings account that you can put it in. If you put your money already, it's not doing anything, you put it in a high interest savings account, each money instead of, depending on how much money you put into this, but let's just say instead of $1, you could get $2. And I know that sounds so little, but if you guys are really working with volume, I recently read somewhere that Nepo babies were living off of their income from their interest, from the amount of money that is in their accounts. So I think one trust fund slash Nepo baby was I think making just straight up $200 thousand dollars just from their interest rates so it does add up and every penny counts okay if you especially if you also come from an asian household this line is going to matter a lot to you so where you put your money is really important because you want to be able to maximize accounts that are going to give you the most amount of return when you're just sitting there doing nothing so you just want to be smart about it so the one account that i want to talk about with you today is one that is actually very new to canadians so if you are not canadian i'm sorry this is not going to apply to you but i want to talk about the neo money account and by the way this video is sponsored by neo financial if you guys are not new to this channel you will know that i heavily heavily review products for months and months before i go and tell you guys about it for neo financial you guys know i have been affiliated with them for over a year now i absolutely love them as an institution they recently just came out with a new product called the neo money account and the reason why this money account is so amazing is because number one it offers higher interest rates than most canadian banks even canadian high interest interest saving account banks. So the interest rate right now is currently at 2.25%, which is huge because right now the average Canadian high interest savings rate is I believe around 1.5 to maximum two. So this one is giving you 2.25, which is huge. So by putting your money into the savings account, you're already generating more interest than most of the institutions that are out there. So this is a really, really great place for you to just put your money in, especially if you kind 
kind of don't want to put it in an investment right now maybe you are holding it to use on a wedding or something like that this is going to be a really great spot for you to park your money the reason why this account is also really beneficial is because you can also get a card out of it which can also turn into Apple Pay and can also turn into a physical card if you wish so the reason why the card is also beneficial is because you spend it sort of like a debit card it works the exact same way so for those of you who have already heard me talk about Neo Financial before then you guys will know that they generate some of the best cashbacks on things like restaurants they've actually now integrated a lot of other e-commerce as well so that's why I've been loving using their credit card for the last few years because every single time I go to a restaurant I actually look to see which restaurants have the highest cash back and I will use my card and get my cash back I just want to throw back to last year's vlog when I took my parents to this fancy restaurant in Vancouver called Annalena and the cash back was insane I can't remember exactly how much it was but I remember I got $16 back on cashback it from one transaction which was insane because you can't tell me you get cash back and it's not a discount okay it's not a discount it's an actual credit card cash back on a restaurant and that was so much money on cashback it actually blew my mind i think after i shared it with you guys so many of you went and got the credit card and i hope that you guys are still very much enjoying that back to the neo money card the reason why the neo money card is good is because for those of you who have been hearing me rave about this credit card but let's just say you were uncomfortable in you know submitting a credit application for another credit card this is a really really great way for you to enjoy all the benefits that the neo credit card can give you because by using the neo money account you still get to use and receive all the cash backs when you pay with their card and on top of that it is guaranteed approval when I went to apply for the money account it took so 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 quick I, and I got it right away onto my phone so once again if you were someone that wanted the credit card really badly but you didn't want your credit checked etc this one doesn't do a credit check if you apply for the money account it also once again you get to enjoy all the benefits average is about five percent in cash back also get to enjoy the Neo perks. This was something I specifically asked about because recently I've been really enjoying their travel perks as well because every time I travel, I just pay like $5 for the month and then I get travel insurance. I get really good cash back on my foreign exchange transactions. So it basically averages out to like a 0.5 foreign transaction fee and things like that. It's just absolutely amazing. I'm gonna leave some more details here for you, but make sure you guys check it out. The point of the first point also is even if you are somebody who isn't Canadian, you should always look for a really good place to park your money because like I said, you gotta think like a rich person and a rich person has their money making for them. So make sure you're not having your money just sitting in a checking account that isn't really generating money. The least you can do is put it in a high interest savings account to have it generate a little bit more money from a day-to-day -day basis. The second point that I wanna mention as well is be smart with your credit cards. This is another tough lesson that I learned the last few years I really noticed how my parents manage their money and how they use their credit cards but then I started seeing how rich people use credit cards and how they use points and I had another epiphany I am now one of those people that really really take advantage of credit cards and when I am shopping whenever I'm spending you will notice that depending on what it is I will have a different credit card for each use because I want to be able to maximize the money that I get in return so one example is once again the Neo Financial credit card. If you guys are spending on local restaurants, especially if you're Canadian, I highly recommend that you guys check out what is available. Some of their cash back is so high. It's not even a joke. It's like 16%, 17%. I'm like, I don't understand how you guys are able to give that much money back, but you know what? I don't even care. I just get to enjoy the benefits. But a lot of the times using a credit card that really align with how you spend, whether it's you like to eat out a lot, you like to travel a lot, you want to be able to find a credit card that really, really fits your entire lifestyle so you can maximize on the points that you're getting and what you're getting in return. So you guys also know that I am someone who travels a lot. I've been able to kind of just like work out a system where I get to travel at least a few times for free because of the credit cards that, that I'm using. And once again, I want to emphasize 
emphasize on this point that it is about compatibility because how everybody spends their money and how everybody spends their time and how everyone wants to receive their rewards are going to be different. So this is going to be up to you to find something that is going to be super compatible with you. Like I said, if you are Canadian and if you do want really good points on credit cards, definitely check out Neo Financial credit card or the money account because both of them offer the same type of perks. The third tip that I want to give you is in addition to credit cards, there's also other ways to find coupons and get cash back. So for example, whenever I shop, I use sites such as Rakuten or Chirpist or something like that because these discount sites, every time you purchase, you also get additional cash back. So imagine this, you use your Neo Financial card and then you use like a Rakuten. So then you get cash back from Rakuten and you get cash Cash back from your credit card. So that is just like such insane amount of cash back that you could get back by just being smart with how you spend. For example, if you go on Sephora and you want to spend money on Sephora, one way to spend on Sephora is just you go on Sephora and you spend your money and whatever, and you're not careful with whatever you spend. The other option is you spend money on Sephora and you maximize on which credit card you use, you maximize on the cash back sites, and then you get way more money back and way more savings that way. So in that sense, you're almost like a making money if that makes sense. The fourth tip that I have is actually something that I learned from my full-time job. So as you guys know, I used to work in corporate. I used to work in a telecommunications company and this tip is really all about renegotiating your contracts, renegotiating or refinancing, etc., or even just really bargaining and just asking for a bargain. So one example is, for example, your phone bill. Everyone kind of just like, after they get their phone bill, they kind of just, everything is on autopilot. But there are certain times a year you can actually rejig or even like certain times if you just randomly call. If you're ever on a customer service call with your telecommunications company, just simply ask them, like, hey, by the way, what are some deals that you can give me right now with me being a customer for this amount of time? So a lot of the times, for example, if you just simply ask that, they'll be like, there's actually an offer right now. And this is honestly a hot take because not a lot of people know this, but they'll be like, hey, there's actually an offer on your account for X amount of money and so it's less than what you pay for and you get a little bit more. You can also call during prime times such as Black Friday, Cyber Monday week. During those times, for example, things like telecommunication companies always rejig their plans or they have better offers. So during that time when you're looking to see if there's a better offer, you can switch your contract over to a different one because you're not canceling, you're just switching your plan or you're getting a new phone and using that time to switch your plan. So I feel like this one is really important because one thing that I also did that helped me save a ton of money was also another contract that I did, which was for my mortgage, which is in the terms of refinancing. So if you guys are not familiar, when you get a mortgage, you're signed on with so many years and obviously the interest rate, whatever it is, the terms that you signed on with. So what I had done was after I purchased my place and I after I renovated it, I went to the bank and asked them to refinance my place because it is now worth more after my renovation. And in addition, I wanted to take advantage of the low interest rate that COVID was giving. So during that time, I renegotiated my contract. I believe I had to pay a penalty, but the penalty still works out for me in the long run because I was able to renew my contract and take advantage of the low interest rate during COVID. So this tip is really about just kind of like think about the contracts that you have in place right now, whether it is your phone, whether it is your mortgage or your car or whatever. The biggest tip within this tip is if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. So for me, it's always like, hey, if you've if you've been with someone for a very long time, it never hurts to ask like, hey, is there a better interest rate? Can you get me a better deal, etc. Because whenever you ask, and I always do, I always do, even when I call the bank or any type of customer service, if there's ever a fee that they are putting upon me, I'll always ask them like, is there any way you can wave it and every single time I ask 99% of the time it's been waived. So this is just another tip that I wanted to share with you guys because I'm definitely not a shy person. I think you just need to kind of look out for yourself, you know, especially when you have to fend for yourself and not rely on your parents anymore. I just feel like you have to be very savvy and just kind of think about different ways that you can do and use to capitalize on your opportunity and 
pretty much get you basically the best deal possible or rejig your deals. Okay, so I wanna to move to the second part of the video. So the second category is the work hard category. So this category is honestly what is going to make the biggest difference. So I really hope that the first part of the video was helpful because even though those tips are things that are going to change your day to day in kind of a minuscule amount, I mean, unless if you're a trust fund baby and you put it in a high interest savings account and also generate $200,000 dollars a month but assuming you know you're also like me just a muggle in out in the wild all of those tips that I've given you hopefully they're helpful because they're not your typical like like let's just save money by using one less tissue do you really need to use that tissue or use half the amount of toilet paper that you need type of vibe but I hope these are going to also increase your money little by little but the like I said the biggest money difference is going to be in this category which is work hard so the first tip that I want to start is the one that is the most relatable to me which is starting a side hustle slash starting a business so I of all people understand the lifestyle of working pretty much close to 24 7 because I did work my 9 to 5 and then I would come home and try to work this content creation job obviously the idea is not for everybody to be a content creator this does not have to be the path you take but very much look into a side hustle that interests you the tip that I want to give you in this category is really about finding a passion that is going to set you up for the longevity because the hard reality and the reason why in this category I don't want to be like throwing out a million ideas because honestly you can definitely google or chat GPT ideas for side hustles but the one tip I really want to leave you is you must 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 pick something that is going to last through time and the reason why I want to bring this up to you is because every side hustle that you start is not going to generate money almost immediately unless if you are very lucky but even when I started this side business I didn't generate money for a little while and it only started coming later but what was able to last me through the test of time was because of my passion for what I was doing so I think that it's really important to consider because whether it is content creation even being in this industry for so many years I have seen people come and go and you might even leave before the money starts rolling in because your passion can't sustain it. So whatever it is you may choose in terms of your side hustle or your business, I really, really encourage you to pick something that you love because the idea is hopefully this can take you full time. So you wanna pick something that you're going to enjoy every single day. You also wanna be strategic in what you pick so that it does generate you money, but it is also something that will make you happy. The second tip that I want to focus on is investing. So this one is really important because prior to me making enough money from this job to allow me to quit I actually had a rainy day fund and the reason I was able to raise so much money from my rainy day fund was because I invested a lot of money in stocks so if you are someone who is uncomfortable in investing in stocks yourself then you need to do the research to find a financial advisor or you need to just do your homework and figure out how you want to invest in stocks the way that I personally invested in stocks back in the day because right now I do not have the time to be a little bit more active was I invested it through margin which is when you borrow some money from the bank and you invest it it's a little bit more risky which is why this video is not about how to invest in stocks I'm just telling you you must invest your money this is also the key takeaway of my wealth management course from my business program essentially my professor had us make a life plan okay a life plan planned out our entire life and all the expenses that would follow and so at the top we would include our salaries and we would also include raises we would also include like inflation etc and the one key takeaway that I learned from all of this is that your salary will not sustain your life especially because your life is going to be also interrupted by major life events that will require a lot more money for example even from a day-to-day -day perspective you're barely scraping by with enough savings for a down payment but you must also consider things like a wedding or having babies all of these things are going to also take a major hit on your finances and the two things that I learned from this course that really really helps with I guess your finances at the end 
of the day for your life is number one investing okay the investing is one of the only things you can do besides I mean starting a business etc that can actually substantially grow your money the second thing obviously is having a dual income household and more if you're into that I guess but having more than one income for a household will also help a lot with your money and then obviously the last few things are things also out of our control which is if you have an inheritance and stuff like that so assuming you don't have a partner you don't have a huge inheritance coming the the one thing that I learned from this course is you must invest so if you like I said this video is not a course about how to invest this is more just like okay now it is up to you to go find a financial advisor and or go to chat GBT and start learning the first few things that you can about investing another thing I wanted to talk about is that I forgot the exact stat but this was another thing that I learned from my course which was people who have a financial advisor are much better off I want to say 50% but don't quote me on that than people without a financial advisor maybe this is your sign to get financial advisor the third thing that you can really do to make money as well is to kind of like capitalize on what you already have and what you could do with your surroundings one example that you can consider for extra streams of income is renting out your place renting out your car so for example I know a few friends when they go on vacation and they leave for a few weeks they actually rent their room out on Airbnb for people to stay during that time and that would actually help them cover their rent so if that is something you are comfortable with you can definitely try to explore that the other option is renting out your car so for example renting it out on turbo on days that you're not driving it is another way to make some extra cash these are all things that you can really really look into another personal favorite of mine is because I love to Marie Kondo my place I do a lot of purging every few months and during this time during the purges you can put and sell your no longer wanted clothing items etc on places like Poshmark on places like Facebook marketplace these are all all really really great ideas for you to kind of capitalize on the things that you currently already have the last piece of advice that I have also is honestly just to take on a little bit more part-time work so if you have a nine-to-five I know a lot of people that have their corporate jobs and then maybe serve on the side which by the way I saw this TikTok where they talked about how them being a server still made more money on tips than their banking job which was absolutely astounding but like I said if you do have some extra time on your hands picking up extra part-time shifts or even doing things like for example tutoring or whatever it is that you think that is a going to be somewhat enjoyable for you and be also something that can make you some extra cash but with that being said that is pretty much the video for today I really 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 hope this video helps because once again, I was so nervous about making this video because I really wanted to make something that was going to be helpful for everybody and is inclusive and isn't, like I said, your typical like, let's save money on toilet paper tips. But I hope today's video really helps you out. And if you have any other ideas, please also just leave it in the comments down below so we can all see and I will try to pin those comments as well. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and see you guys in the next video. Bye.